Happy World Environment Day and welcome. I'm Lauren Reed, the producer of the Poem Forest Prize at Red Room Poetry. And I'd like to start by acknowledging that I am zooming in from Darawal country. Usually I look out my window and gaze at the green escarpment, um, but it is shrouded in cloud and mist today. Uh, have welcomed the family of plovers that lives on the roof below my apartment. And I acknowledge local Darul and Wadi Wadi elders past, present and future. This land is, was, and always will be Aboriginal land. We'd love to know what First Nations country you're all zooming in from. I think there's over 600 of you tuning in today and we'd love you to say hello in the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We'll be inviting you to share your writing and ideas throughout the workshop today using the Q&A. So if possible, to make sure you're close enough to a keyboard to send us your thoughts, that would be wonderful. We can't hear or see you in this Zoom webinar, so we'd love to know that you're out there. There's also an option to turn on closed captions in the Zoom toolbar at the bottom of your screen. And if you have any other access questions, please let us know through the Q&A. Poem Forest is a youth nature writing prize where we plant a tree for every poem entered to create a real forest of poems for future generations. This year, the forest is growing here on Darwell Country in partnership with Wollongong City Council who are creating tiny forests. And they work using the same ecosystem as a large forest does, but on a micro scale so that they can grow in small urban spaces. And you are all here today for poetry writing to write a nature poem. And we hope that after the workshop, you'll take a moment to enter your poem into the Poem Forest Prize on the Red Room Poetry website so that we can plant your poem tree um, in thanks for your poem. And so teachers, parents and guardians, we will ask for your help with that step. We hope there's some spare time after the workshop to finish your poems and then enter them into the prize. And as well as having your very own tree in Wollongong, there's also lots of other cool prizes that your poem will be in the running for across all different age categories. And to help us craft our nature poems in the workshops today, we are very grateful to have an incredible poet and author with us, Helena Fox. Hi, Helena. Hello, hello. Now, Helena, you might have, we're here with secondary students now, so you might have read Helena's YA novel, which won the Prime Minister's Literary Award, um, How It Feels to Float. And Helena's second novel, The Quiet and the Loud, has just been released this year. And this year, Red Room Poetry has also commissioned Helena to write a nature poem in response to Poem Forest to help inspire all of you guys to write your own work. And so the workshop today is going to step us through techniques that Helena used to write her poem, um, Elegy for Living Sea. Over to you. Great. Thanks so much, Lauren. Um, welcome, welcome, everybody. It's so lovely to have so many of you here. And I'm also coming to you from beautiful, beautiful Darawal country and I'd like to acknowledge and pay my respects to um, the traditional custodians of this land and I'm so grateful um, that I get to live here. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about my poem and then I'm going to invite you to build a poem with me um, using, as Lauren said, the techniques that I um, used in making my poem. Um, I didn't necessarily go, I'm going to use this technique right now. I just kind of wrote and then noticed the techniques that I'd used afterwards. So this is kind of a, I'm showing you my tools um, and then you'll get to build whatever you want and decide to use whatever tools of, my, of the same kind of tools that I used for your poem or use your own tools. That's going to be your choice. Um, for starters, I'm going to read to you my poem. Allergy for a living sea. So, the ocean is a heartbeat, she says, the two of us by a tide pool. Green moss and mollusks, fish flit and side eye crabs, sleeping anemones and surf grabbing at the flat rock shelf, gulls wheeling and keening. She, nearly ten, starts to cry, the future for her. A rise and rise of tide and heat, 
of bottle caps and plastic wrap, of clag and choke and storm and scraps. The ocean is a pulse, stuttering, a beat fleeting, a wave fractured and flat lining. I know, my love, I know. The ocean is a heartbeat. Let us place the ocean to our ear, repenting. The ocean is a heartbeat. Let us lay our hands on the ocean, reviving. The ocean is a heartbeat. And that's my poem. Um, I wrote it about the sea because it's the ocean is a really, really special place for me in nature. It's where I go to an awful lot. I live about 10 minutes walk or 15 minutes walk away from the sea. And I also grew up, spent, I traveled a lot, but I spent a lot of time by the sea in different countries in my childhood and adulthood. So it's always been a really important place for me. And I've seen it as a kind of a living thing, like its own entity with its own kind of rhythms and pulses. And so it made sense to me one day I was sitting by the ocean and I was thinking about this poem and out came the line, the ocean is a heartbeat. And I followed that line um, until I ended up with a poem, which was really lovely <clears throat> to kind of take a natural, special natural place of mine and turn it into something like, um, well, an elegy and also just um, just in honor of a beautiful thing. Um, so I'd like to show you, I'd like to now lead you through some prompts that will help you write your own poem. Um, so the very first thing that I'd like you to do is spend a bit of time um, thinking of what might be a special natural place for you. And like me, it might be a place that you have a close attachment to or that you visit often. Um, it might be a place that's um, really beautiful or might make you feel really safe or comfortable. Or it might be an adventurous place. It might be the cliffs. Uh, there's a, cliffs at Watamola, you know, they're pretty you know, people jump off that. I'm not sure if you're allowed to, but anyway, that's that's a place of adventure in my mind. Um, or it might be a place that uh, isn't necessarily a big, big place, but just an element of nature that means something to you. It might be a garden bed where you garden and make your lettuce um, or a pot plant in your room or just an echidna, as I say, that lives in your backyard or even the sky. Mm -hmm. So just take a moment to think of this um, special place, but also think about why it matters to you. Um, and so it might be connected to an experience you had. So for example, it might be a trip you went on, or it might be a place you go to regularly, like the sea for me. It might be an element of nature that you often see, like a tree in your backyard, or a thing or place that you take care of. And just to say, it might also be a place you don't physically know or have been to. It just might be a place that's really intriguing to you, like Antarctica. Um, if you haven't been to Antarctica, you might want to even write about that um, because it excites your interests. You or um, you you think you think you'd like it to be protected more, something like that. So we're going to put the timer on, and just for a couple of minutes. We're going to write down what would be a special natural place or element of nature and why we might care about it. So I'll set my timer now. And those are some examples. If you can't think of anything, have a look at my list and see if it's useful to you.
I might let everyone know that I'm going to write along with all of the prompts in the workshop today. And so I've chosen a, my special place in nature as the Fox Glacier in Aotearoa in New Zealand. And the reason that I'm choosing it is because I've been there and I went there with my mum before she got really sick last year. And so it's a special place in my memory for that reason. Um, but it's also a really special place in nature. And if you've thought of your special place and the reasons why it's special, you are welcome to share them with us, as Natalie's said in the Q&A, so that we can get a sense of all the places that you're writing across. I'll have a look now at what some people might be submitting. Um, yes, I'll, I'll look out for if you've, if you've put in your place. Um, that uh, we've had two minutes of writing time, so I'll just chat for a moment now about what we're going to do with this special natural place. Um, we're going to use that as the basis for the poem that we're going to write. Um, and if, again, as I said, if if you couldn't come up with something, feel free to take something from my list and think of why it might intrigue you or interest you. Um, so if people haven't yet, we'll just keep an eye on the chat and see if anyone wants to submit anything during the rest of the workshops, rest of the workshop. So just let, just pop anything you want into the chat um, that you'd like to share. So um, we'll move on to the first technique that we're gonna use for building this poem. And that will be uh, using the technique of your observation. Um, which is just basically the tool, a key tool of a writer is to pay attention to your surroundings um, and just noting specific details about what you see. And it's nice to just kind of jot them down. Um, I've jotted them down in notebooks on my phone or just to memory or taken sneaky photos um, if it's people, <laughs> um, but it might also be of my natural landscape. Um, it's a really good thing to kind of pay attention to the world around you and then write down using um, like a specificity of detail, just specific details that are unique um, to, to that thing to kind of make it three-dimensional um, when you're writing it down and just this, it kind of comes to life for the reader then. And um, when I was writing my poem, I was imagining somebody standing on one of those like rock shelves um, looking out to the ocean by the tide pools. And so I put in this specificity of detail. I wrote green moss and mollusks, fish flipped, side eye crabs, sleeping anemones, and then surf grabbing at the flat rock shelf. You know how it can kind of erupt if you've been near the sea. And then gulls wheeling and keening. Um, so I thought about my, the senses. I thought about things moving in the space. So I want you to kind of Think about this natural space and then jot down, say, three to five details that would kind of be elements of that physical space or that part of nature, whether it's a tree, um, the desert, a park. As you can see, I've written some examples here, like the desert, hot frilled neck, hot, not hot frilled neck lizards. The desert is hot and it has frilled neck lizards in it, um, sunbathing. Um, a park has swings. So you can see that I've just kind of jotted it down. It, I'm not trying to make my poem just yet. I'm just taking notes. So as you're making your descriptions, we're going to write for a couple of minutes on this. Um, think about the senses, think about color, think about movement, think about the smells of things. Um, think about what might be happening in the space or what might be changing in the space. And it's, feel free to include um, active descriptions, for example, um, the lizards are sunbathing on the red sand, stars are blazing, kids are playing soccer, mites are scurrying under slabs of bark in the tree. Um, so I'm going to set the timer and just think about three or five details or just kind of make a little list of your own to um, just kind of describe the qualities of this space or this thing, this element of nature. Someone's shared in the chat that they're going to be writing about a butterfly garden, which sounds delightful. Oh, I can't wait to hear really the descriptions nice. of the garden. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for sharing.
Okay, that's the time for that. Just know that all of these little exercises, you're going to use them for the bigger exercise at the end of building your poem. So don't, if you're feeling in any way rushed, remember you can always come back to these bits um, and embellish and also um, just refine any ideas that you've got. So just know that we're just kind of getting started and we're going to move through them quite quickly, but you can always go back and um, yeah, just take a bit more time as needed. So we're going to move on to um, the next exercise. So as you probably could tell from the opening of my poem, um, I open my poem with a metaphor, which um, probably I'm sure that you know what a, me a metaphor is and what a simile is, you know, so a simile is saying something is like something. And a metaphor is saying that something is something else. It's a comparison that's not true. It's like, you know, an uh, ocean is not technically a heartbeat, <laughs> um, but it suggests what something is like by comparing it with something else that has similar characteristics. So, um, so for example, um, I've got here, a, the desert could be a blanket, a park is a friend, a tree is a sentry. Um, and so then what I did with my poem is I kind of um, thought about elements of a heartbeat that might that might be elements in their own right, but also um, have ways that they could relate to the ocean. So um, I want you to come up with a metaphor, just one word or two, for your place or for your element of nature. And this is going to be the first part. It'll just be about 40 seconds where whatever metaphor pops into your mind, um, just write that one down. And then we'll move on to the second exercise, which is thinking about the metaphor and fleshing it out. Okay, I'll set the timer for about 40 seconds. Off you go. All right, that was very quick, but that's probably enough time just to think. I actually, I'm working on my own poem as well, and I've written four possible metaphors that it might be, and I think I'm going to pick one into it as we go into the next step. But feel free right now to pop in what your metaphor might be. So if you've got something is something, just pop it in the chat. I'd love to see what kind of things you've been coming up with. Um, there'll be no... No judgment. I'll just be super keen to see what people have um, as we go. So I'll just keep an eye on the chat. Um, I'm going to go with, um, as another example, uh, I'm going to go with the Galatia is my mother, um, which I think is a really exciting thing to play with because I did yeah. go to the Galatia with my mother, but now I'm <laughs> comparing the Galatia directly to my mother as a metaphor so yeah. I'm excited to yeah. take that on on a journey <laughs> yeah I think that's what happened for me when I said when I wrote down the ocean as a heartbeat I got so intrigued by what I might have meant mm. um, oh I have seen something here it says um, oh the crystal blue waterfall is raining diamonds from the sky is one that I've got and then uh, the sky is an hourglass and the dead leaves are a cemetery. Mm -mm. Those are Hi, really Ellie. fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> I have. Um, <laughs> I have. I have. I'm writing a bit of a darker one right now, and <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not going to read mine out yet. I'm going to make a little. I'm just going to wait and see if I've got any more. Like, because right now I've got <laughs> a cact. The cactus is death, <laughs> but that's just because I had a my plant just recently died. <laughs> And I'm like, oh. no. So it's like an it's like a, a funereal kind of like, oh, the great sadness of my dead cactus. And I'm like, is there any way I can kind of like make another metaphor? But that's what's so lovely is you can play around and then come up with more ideas. So now I actually what I love 
can I do one one little spiel before we move on? Sure, that sure. We've been planting with planting the palm forest trees with Wollongong City Council, and a big part of that is the die off of new seedlings that are planted, ah. especially when heaps of trees are planted at once. And obviously, you try to do it in the right way and know all the care that needs to go into a new planting. But a big part of that is some of them die. Okay, so I think that's point. a really beautiful approach okay. to your poem. It's See? part of the gardening process. <laughs> That's so awesome. So what you're getting right now is poet to poet having a conversation about, oh, this seems a bit dumb. And Lauren's like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's a valid idea that you should explore. And so that's really cool. Thanks, Lauren. Um, what I want you to do now is if you've got your, if you've got some really cool metaphors, I want you to actually do spend a bit of time. You know how we just spent a moment describing the qualities of this natural space or element of nature. Now I want you to do the same thing on the metaphor itself. And those will be very distinct qualities that are, you know, may or may not be exactly like the thing you're describing or comparing it to. They may actually be quite unique. So for example, well, I've got here the desert is a blanket. So a blanket just by itself is soft, warm, covers things up. Um, the park is a friend. A friend is always ready to play. They're fun. They give you space to be yourself. Or a sentry watches over you or watches over things. It can protect you and it stands still. So um, now take a bit of time, about a minute, to write down the qualities of the metaphor itself and see what you come up with. Um, just, you know, just a few ideas. And I'll set the timer again. Okay, I hope you've jotted down some interesting ideas. I definitely have, um, especially with Lauren's feedback. I was like, well, maybe I could see a new way of, of maybe there's a new way of seeing this, which is really exciting. Um, we're got, now going to move on to the third technique that I use quite a lot in my poem, and that's the playing with sound. And that's something I like to do a lot in my writing is playing with sound, the sound of words, the combinations of words, putting them together. You'll see that. Should you read my novels, you'll see I do a lot of uh, language play and um, and poetry play in my novels. And so this is this was a really lovely text to play um, with sound in a shorter form. Um, so what I've used, the four main techniques in poetry that play with word sound are alliteration, assonance, rhyming, and onomatopoeia. And so I'm just going to kind of point out what you see in my poem and ways that I've used that technique. So for example, alliteration is the use, especially in poetry, of um, the same sound or sounds, especially consonants at the beginning of several words. So you'll see that I've got beat, bleating, moss and mollusks, storm and scraps. Um, so those are examples of alliteration. And then assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds in words. And that creates these internal rhymes. So I've got um, the ocean is a pulse stuttering. So you've got the uh, uh sound. And then I've got a rise and rise of tide and heat. So you've got the I, I, I coming through. And then we've got um, a beat bleating. So you've got the E, E sound at, um, working together. So then another one that I've used is rhyme. Um, and I didn't know I was going to use all of these things. It just happened. It's probably because I've read so much poetry and I love it so, so much that I've kind of absorbed it into my system and it just 
felt like that's what the poem needed. And the more that you practice it, the more it can kind of feel really natural. Um, and it's lovely to just play and experiment. So rhyme, not all poems have to rhyme. And this is essentially kind of a free verse poem. But there are some rhyming elements in it, which I just included because it felt right. So I had um, of bottle caps and plastic wrap of clag and choke and storm and scraps. So you've got caps, wrap and scraps, and it just felt right. <laughs> um, probably because as I was reading it out, it just felt like it, it, I liked the idea of a rhyming element, some rhyming element in the poem. And I really rec um, recommend that you um, read your, your work out loud as you're finding the beats of it and the, and the things um, that you want to include. And then onomatopoeia, if you don't, you may not always find this in poetry, um, but I've got some examples. This is where um, the word sounds like the thing it's being, the, the thing it's describing. So I've got keening, so that's kind of a, a mournful kind of wailing sound, so I, or even like a, a scream, it's like, ee, you know, it just has that kind of mournful element. And I've got stuttering, which has kind of the element of this a stutter, you know, it just feels like it's being interrupted. Um, that's with the pulse stuttering. So now I invite you to spend a bit of time um, coming up with some some wordplay and playing with sounds. Just if you can look at you can look at my examples here on the screen um, of things that I've done with my desert example, my park example, and my tree example, which you which I've had running through this whole workshop as those three elements. So now just have a play. It doesn't have to be part of the poem yet. Just put some words together that kind of feel right um, and that use some of these techniques. And I'll put the timer on for two minutes and we'll see what you come up with. Okay, this is your chance now to share uh, some of your word plays. Um, uh, feel free to just pop them in the chat. Let's see what we've got. Um, just waiting for them to come in. Just pop them in. Anything that you've got. I have. Um, I had uh, leaf lowering, letting go was one idea I had. What have you got, Lauren? Is this your dead? plant poems yes the letting go I love yeah. that. um I was really excited with what I came up with sort of rhymey and assonancy at the same time yeah. um and I sort of I'd written it and then sort of realized where the assonance and the rhyme lay through reading aloud which you told us oh. to do and I found that really helpful um 
in my mind, sorry, I'm a performance poet. So I <laughs> read aloud to myself in my brain. Oh, that's um, funny. So I said, um, fresh flowing rivulets gives everything of herself to me, a tiny speck in the blue mm. expanse. So oh. rivulets gives everything. Yeah. I'm and then the word speck. Yeah. So I love, I'm excited I love, about that. I, yeah. I love the flow and the stop. Like, um, and I love the v v v sound in it, which is really interesting. Um, yeah. So if anyone's got some other things they'd like to pop in, that'd be so cool. Um, okay. I've, I see one uh, from Joanna. So air embossed with nature's fleshy fluids. Mm -hmm. That's really Ooh. cool. And then Chloe says a single silent word slipping by the breeze. And I love the oh, ulls nice. and the s's in that. Um, and then we've got another one: endless bounds of soaring clouds. Okay, so we've got some lovely ow and or sounds, and just lovely kind of vowel use there. Um, so really, that's really cool to see the um, the alliteration there and the and the sounds. Um, the other the thing I think I said in an earlier workshop was just I often describe things and have, if I've already said this, I might have a bit of deja vu, but just the idea of the tastiness of words and the sing-song sound of words and the idea of words as rhythm and as beat and as music. Um, the more that we kind of celebrate words as being almost like having like energy, it the more we can enjoy this kind of process building and creating because it's it's, it's one thing is the message that we're creating and the story we're telling but it's also about the the pieces that we use in the building um can be really just have so much energy and and softness and 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 loudness and and kind of flow and it's in it can draw you in just as much as music can in my mind so that's something I encourage you to do is play and really kind of enjoy this time so um I'm, I'll move on to the last bit of this, and that's in building a poem and in poetry. Um, there's always some kind of meaning or purpose or message that a poet is wanting to communicate. And that's even, you know, it may not be that obvious to the reader. And sometimes the thing that frustrates people about poetry is it's like they read it and they go, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. And that's okay because it's just, they're often hinting at an idea and it, you can interpret a poem however you want. Um, it really is just totally your call um, for, you know, what you, what you read in a poem and what you get out of a poem is up to you. So I don't believe that there's necessarily a, white, a right way to interpret a poem. Um, so a message in a poem can be really indirect or it can be um, super clear um, it can be very deep and meaningful about existential ideas, or it might be a really lovely snapshot of a moment in time. One of my favorite poets is a poet called Mary Oliver, who does a lot of just really beautiful nature poems where she's in a moment and she's enjoying the moment, or she's feeling something or connecting to, you know, the living things in the world. And I just, and then there's deeper meaning, of course, but it's just so, it's like a beautiful snapshot and also reflective of a feeling. Um, so that's just something that I'd like you to think about. Um, you don't necessarily have to know this at the start of a poem, but when I was writing my ocean poem, I was thinking about how much I love it, about how much I love the ocean as its own entity, as a living thing with its own kind of energies and hidden secrets and, and beauty. And, and the idea of how much I wanted to protect it kind of came in. And so I guess um, I thought I, if there's a, a way of communicating the energy and the vulnerability of the sea, that's something I wouldn't mind trying to get across. So I want you to spend a moment to think about what you'd like to say about your chosen natural place. And if there's anything you're concerned about, or if there's a special memory you'd like to share or a special um, kind of experience you'd like to share with, with your reader. And so you can see examples in the slide of some kind of ways you could respond to this and we'll just do that for about a minute because you'll probably explore this more as you build your poem as well so I'll just set the timer for a minute as you kind of reflect on what it is you'd like to say about this about, with your poem
All right. Now it's time to do the very funnest part of this workshop in my mind, which is the building of your poem. Um, I want you to look over all the notes that you've made um, and start to construct a poem. And I want you to think about um, your natural place with the specific descriptions that you used, any metaphors and those qualities of metaphor that you created. Um, play with any sounds, continue to play with those and see if you can include your feeling or message. Um, some examples uh, that you see there are the bits pulled out of a poem that I, I made that we'll see at the end, um, the poem that I kind of built out of all these little snippets. The other thing you can do is add any new words or lines as needed. You can change things up. You don't have to include everything that you put in your notes. Um, you can think of it as kind of a puzzle that you're playing around with the pieces and it can be in lots of different shapes. So we're going to do this for about five minutes, which is really nice. We're going to get to stretch our legs and get really into this. And so I'll see you after five minutes.
Well, I was getting pretty into that. <laughs> um, and if you are too, that's okay. Um, you can write your final, you know, just get your tiny ideas down. I would spend maybe another minute just getting my last little thoughts. Um, this is the moment if I could see your faces, I'd say, how do you feel? How was that? Um, because sometimes we get excited by the tiny glimpses of um, ideas or it's like, oh, I like that line. Yeah, I think I could do something with that line. Um, when we Let's move to the next slide and I'll show you what I came up with. It's not necessarily um, the best thing I've ever written, but I kind of wanted to share it because it was like, um, just give you an idea of what you can come up with in a short time. So I kind of just put, pulled this together from, as you can see from my examples, I had a tree through all of it. So I just tried, um, a tree is a sentry, tall, old, always watching. Birds flit to branches at dusk. Wind makes the trees sway. Leaves tussle, rustle, making a sleeping song for birds who do not know how fast a tree can fall. They dream of nothing always trusting in tomorrow. So you can kind of see the techniques that I was using. Um, we're going to take a little moment to chat about uh, what we do next with these poems. But for now, can you, if I'd really love it, if anyone wants to put in any lines in the chat, um, any kind of glimpses into what you've been creating would be lovely. Or if you want to share your whole poem, I would be truly delighted to share it and you don't luckily with zoom and online um we you know that can be completely anonymous um if you want um i highly highly recommend because at first i thought oh should i share my poem it's bit you know I, I haven't really polished it yet this is truly just a rough rough draft um but i kind of thought well i'll be brave and put it up there and see if you can see some of those techniques and then i then take this little poem and polish it and shine it. And that's kind of what I do with the next stage of my writing. Um, oh, someone's just put in secrets whispered by the wind. That's got a lovely energy to it. This idea of like, I'm curious about what those secrets might be. And I love the idea of the wind. And to the person who submitted that, um, I'd love to see more. Um, who's whispering the secrets, I wonder? Are we with a tree? Are we in the bush? Are we by the sea? Are we in the desert? Very curious. Um, oh, rain was the map to my heart. Oh, <laughs> I really love that. That's really cool. Um, I'll just keep an eye on the chat as I as I natter on. Um, I'll just talk a little bit. I'm excited for the... Um that butterfly garden yes. poem. I don't know if that was part of any of these examples, but share share the rest of your butterfly garden. Yes. I'm excited for that. <laughs> yes, we have we actually someone from the primary school group just sent through their first poem and we just we just before this workshop started, um, we got to hear that brand new poem. And it was so exciting because I just thought, oh, this is how it happens. You get, you know, it's like you are planting that forest, you know, I've given you your little seeds and now you can build something with it or grow something with it. It's very exciting. So um, I wanted to say that um, as you pro as you finish this poem and, um, and get kind of get it to a stage where you'd be happy to share it, um, the main thing I kind of wanted to say was don't worry if your first draft is a bit, if you don't love it, because that's what polishing and editing and reading things out loud does for you. It's like it just, it's your chance to refine it and make it right. So it's okay that um, we often think that we have to be perfect the first time we do something. And that is not, that's not how writers work. They try and try and they do draft after draft. I did many, many drafts of my ocean poem before. I, and then I sent it to Lauren and then she gave me feedback. So that's how it can go. So um, try reading your poem out loud. Think about rhythm. Um, a, a poem's just come through. So I'm going to go through my tips for editing and then I'm going to read this poem. Ah. Um, so think about rhythm. Think about pacing. Think about the sound and the feel of your words. Another thing to think about is where your line breaks are going to be. Think about them as breaths and pauses, if you like, or just the way 
it's like it's just going to turn on that there's just a little bit more tension in the line you know where you've done your line break that so that's really interesting you might want to have more white space as well feel free to move things around so the thing you started with it might not be the one the way you want to open your poem um think about the meaning and intention of your poem so with my cactus one that I'm now working on I thought at first it was one thing I spoke to Lauren she gave me feedback now I'm trying to incorporate a different kind of message and musing about it it's really lovely to have that kind of you know if you show it to someone you trust and get someone's feedback it's a really lovely way to get more energy um and then you know reading other people's poems is so wonderful I couldn't recommend it more so I'm going to read this poem that's come through. Um, it's like a jungle full of wild surprise where animals talk and the trees reach the skies. It's a symphony of life, a bustling zoo, where every step you take, you discover something new. The sun peeks through the leaves like a shining beam, lighting up the forest like a fantastic dream. Ah. I love it. This is what you often do when uh, <laughs> you click your fingers in those. I love it. That's beautiful. A jungle full of wild surprise is a really nice way of, it's like a, just a really very vibrant picture that's being created here. And a symphony, a, you know, a forest is a symphony. So you've incorporated music as well, you know, kind of just that energy of surprise, of music, bustling. Um, and discovery that's you've really done a beautiful job with that poem thank you so much um, I'm seeing uh, just I'll just do a couple more just because we do have time um, some things here uh, we quicken movement frigid a frail animal making a trek to safer ground that's a lovely mm. line um, the taste of salt on my tongue is a nice one taste on the tongue and salt Brook gurgling, a voice that never listens. Oh, that's so nice. And then this is the last one I'll share now because um, I think Lauren was also going to share her glacier poem, which I'm excited to hear. Um, so this is from Rebecca. A raging storm, a quiet breeze, the hum of the wind throughout the trees, a cascade of falling rain, dew on a clover, early light at day, the streaks of hope, breaking through the blanket of green and down, warming the brush, bringing life to the soil, the ghost gum standing tall with pride, the sound of trickling water, the salty spray of the tide. Mm. Mm. I love the contrast of raging storm and quiet breeze. So it's like you've really created just like a lot of dynamics with that poem, Rebecca. It's just a really beautiful picture. Oh, and I don't want to ignore other people's ones, but there's one that, um, oh, it's just beautiful. There's one with darkness dissolving into blue, cool blue-gray drifting. There's some really lovely lines in that one as well. Lauren, did you want to share your glacier poem? I feel like we should read Chloe's whole oh, piece. Okay, should cool. we read, all right, good. Read I just didn't all? want I feel like to. We have time. Oh, good. Yeah. I just didn't. I'm always mindful of the time. Okay, Chloe, I'll read this whole one. Even when I'm drifting, at least I drive within you. Every point of my being touched among the touched among the arid air. Though however high I reach, all I can do is stare. Perhaps you are mere emptiness. The darkness dissolved into blue, cool blue-gray drifting, whirling, swallowing me into its hue. Thank you so much, Chloe. That's really lovely. I have one. Um, you were speaking about getting feedback, Helena, from people that you trust on your work, and I know mm. none of these beautiful student poets know or trust me necessarily but something I noticed across all three of the examples that we shared was this concept of an end rhyme where the rhyme that you're creating falls at the very end of the line so it sort of gives a finality to the line or to the poem overall and maybe one thing that I would challenge uh, people who are using rhyme within their poem to do is try having a rhyme in the middle of the line perhaps uh, instead of always having it at the very end, because this creates a sort of um, uh, something you can't, can't anticipate. You think 
you know where the rhyme is going to fall as the listener of the poem but then it sort of surprises you and does something a bit different and that's always Mm. something that I really enjoy with rhyme and I think that happens maybe in your commissioned poem as well um so just a little idea if you if you still have time to edit and play Mm. with your poems yeah and that's exactly what I was talking about with just enjoy that playfulness like oh I've got my rhyme here what if I put it there or oh I've got you know I haven't tried some onomatopoeia here oh I haven't tried you know let me see and then let me move it around and move it around it's so nice to do that's why poetry is just one of my favorite things of all time so yeah (laughs) did you finish your dead plant draft um I hadn't quite gotten my last line, but yeah, I do have, I don't know if you want to hear it because we've got your glacier one as well, but this one I literally wrote in this moment. Um, (laughs) The the cactus is a gift, potted, small, handed to me by a friend with a smile. I've kept it alive all this time for years and now it has died. Fleshy, once green, once vibrant, new roots reaching, fresh blush of leaves. Now it mulches, leaves lowering and letting go, dirt to dirt, grit, sticky, sitting, lilting, entering death with no sound at all. I look at the pot, brown with brown inside, and wonder if this is the natural way of all things. (laughs) My idea made it into the end. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And you can feel the play that you're doing with different words and ideas and rhymes and assonance within that. It's such a beautiful example of a healthy first draft, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can finish with my my (laughs) glacier poem. Uh, Full disclosure, I wrote the first draft of my glacier poem during the primary workshop um, earlier this morning. Um, And so I found it really beneficial to go away for an hour or so, Mm. do a bit of my other work. And then I came back during this workshop and sort of have added a couple of lines and feel really excited about where it's going. That's another maybe technique that you guys can try if you have time when you're editing your work. So the glacier is my mother. Arms holding me still and quiet in the valley. Eagles loop overhead and ice crackles underfoot. She retreats slowly from the town, withdraws into the body of ice and fresh flowing rivulets gives everything of herself to me, a tiny speck in the blue expanse. I brush her matted hair in the hospital bed and she melts into the mattress. And also she grins inside of an ice cave. She strides across the glacier her hiking poles tinkling against the ice. Oh, that's beautiful, Lauren. See, and this is what you can all do. We can all do this. It's really lovely, (laughs) this combination of your words, Lauren, and my words and students' words. It's just been a wonderful afternoon of just sharing ideas. And thank you to everyone who's offered their ideas and done this with us so magical and we hope that you have time to keep editing and working on your poem drafts a little bit in class outside of this workshop and then we really do encourage you all to head to redroompoetry.org and submit your poem to the poem forest prize you have to fill out a little online entry form and upload your poem and when we receive it um, through the digital entry form that's when we can plant your tree in on darwell country in wollongong for you Hopefully one day you can come and visit your Wollongong tree and we'll give lots of updates um, across the prize. It closes in September and there'll be winner's announcements and all that sort of good stuff. Um, So please make sure you enter your poem. And thank you so much for being here. I have a couple of important people to thank. Um, Our poem for us patron, John B. Fairfax, the Adders Foundation, the Graham Wood Foundation, the Australia Council for the Arts and Create New South Wales. They have all supported us so we can put on this lovely workshop for you all today to celebrate World Environment Day. So thanks again to everyone for choosing to spend it with us. And thank you to Helena Fox for facilitating such a beautiful workshop for us. Yeah, I've loved it. Thanks so much, Lauren. And thanks so much, Red Room Poetry. See you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.